our patron, Jeremy Hardy, is here. And uh, Jeremy... <laughs> I uh, became a patron of the foundation last year on the orders of our president, Emma Thompson. Uh, we had a large fundraising event and, and all the other, many of the other patrons were there. Anish Kapoor, Colin Firth, Jim Nofty, Beast Bissett, uh, Dorian Lawrence, people of that calibre. And after a few cheering drinks, uh, Emma decided to introduce me as the new patron of the foundation. <laughs> Emma having made many films about dictatorships and tyrannies, I have learned, learned the power of the, of the unaccountable potentate who just makes orders and has everybody called into line. And of course, I wasn't going to turn it down because it's a great honour to be a patron of this organisation. I first met Helen Bamber, uh, probably, I don't know, in the 90s, so over 20 years ago, when she was with the Medical Foundation for the Care of Victims of Torture. There's a large concert organised, um, which Juliet Stevenson asked me to, to take part in the first half of, which is all various people like me and Emma and various comedians and writers and poets and people. Uh, the second half was an absolutely god-awful oratorio about torture written by somebody with absolutely no experience of it, involving a lot of opera singers, but nonetheless very well-meaning. And uh, I met Helen at that time and uh, was so struck by what an incredibly powerful woman she was. Those people who weren't fortunate enough to meet Helen she was a tiny woman and an absolute dynamo. Uh, with absolute charm, she would put her lipstick on before an important phone call. Uh, she was quite happy to flirt with much younger men. <laughs> and, you know, there are times when, when it's quite nice to be flirted with by a woman in her late 80s. <laughs> Especially when you're in your 50s and you, well, you know, you... <laughs> options are running out, let's say. <laughs> The fantastic thing about the organisation, because Helen founded the, care of the, 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 the Medical Foundation for the Care of Victims of Torture, and now grew that organisation because of the narrow definition of torture as being something only perpetuated by a state actor. And Helen, in her vast experience, knew that there's all kinds of sources of trauma and torture, including human beings just being incredibly cruel to each other. And that's why this organisation is quite unique in focusing on human trafficking, trafficked women, women who've been brought here, uh, uh, forced into sex work and human slavery, uh, because our society doesn't have only recently recognised that, that women do not make these choices. These are not lifestyle choices. People don't choose to travel around the world and, and work in, in, in sex work because they think that might be an interesting career. Up until now, women like that have been criminalised. They've been, they've been, you know, places have been raided and people still get deported because of this. But uh, while politicians talk about how they're against slavery and human trafficking, the resources aren't there. Because we think of refugees and we think, it's, we see people getting off the boats on Lesbos, and we see people in the jungle camp in Calais, and all of our hearts say, yes, we must help these people, they must come here, they must settle, we must give these people sanctuary. But the follow-up is just not here. I mean, the resources are not here. The refugee council has been cut to, to its bone. I mean, it's burning them off, it's the phone rings out. An enormous population of Afghans who've made up the back of lorries that burn them. Refugee Council's phone just rings out. And there, all of the organisations are, are, are suffering. And, and, but this organisation is particularly specialist because it, it realises and it focuses on the fact that once people are in this country, the support is not there. Uh, local, local authorities are not resourced. Somebody who is called an illegal immigrant is only illegal because a civil servant in Croydon does not understand what has happened to them does not understand what they're trying to say, does not empathise, doesn't get it, or simply doesn't care that somebody is clearly traumatised, clearly finding it very difficult to tell their story. Because it can be very humiliating. So even, even torture, which you, you might think of as something, it would be easy to talk about the fact that somebody battered you. It's not. If you've been tortured, you carry shame with you. Mm -hmm. Not only pain, not only, not only a feeling of victimhood, but a feeling of shame and embarrassment. People do not want to share these stories. And so to enable people, to, to articulate and not feel ashamed and not feel diminished. Because the worst thing, probably, about all forms of victimisation is how they lower people's self-esteem, how low they make people feel. So to raise people up and also equip them with all the practical skills. Because people come here as refugees not speaking English or not feeling confident, not knowing anybody. They don't know the system. There is no real mechanism or telling you how, what your legal rights are, how to apply for housing, how to register with the doctor. These things are simply not there. 
And so this tiny organization in this one building does an enormous amount. Very, very practical, very, very specialist. It's pioneering because Helen Bamber was somebody who identified needs that other people hadn't spotted. And this goes right back to the start of her life. It's pioneering, but also everything is evidence-based. People are not being experimented with. People are being treated in the most advanced, most humane, and most efficient way. By a very, very small NGO, it's got a very small staff. No money is wasted. Uh, there, are no, there are no big cars with logos on the side. There are not lots of executives. There are not lots of glitzy functions. Basically, it's these people and an awful lot of incredibly talented people giving their time. Some are full-time staff. They work incredibly hard, way beyond what their pay grade is. But also, a lot of the therapists and practitioners give their time for nothing. So I hope you'll enjoy walking around. Enjoy is the right word because sometimes we feel that we should be very reverential and very somber about, about the suffering that, that human beings have endured. But one of the things that makes me joyful about this organization is you meet the people who are coming out of the other side, the people who've been helped, people who've suffered things that most of us couldn't even bear to think about. And you meet them and you talk to them and they are whole. They are, you're not talking to a broken person. You're not talking to someone you feel sorry for you feel compassion and empathy for, but you feel honored to be in their presence, and you feel uplifted, and you feel that your life's been enhanced by meeting somebody so old, so calm, so resolute, and so strong. And that's what this organization does, and that's why I am very, very proud to be part of it. So I do hope you enjoy having this evening within this organization, and I'll hand you now back to TJ.